this is Haley, and in today's video I'm going to be talking all about my port. So this might be brand new news to you guys if you aren't already following me on my Instagram, which I would highly recommend because I update there quite often. Uh, my Instagram is Haley's Life Through a Lens, as well as my TikTok, Haley's Life Through a Lens. Um, I've talked and showed my port on there a couple of times, so if you follow me there, you already know. So I thought I would just make a video showing you guys the port and letting you guys know that I no longer have a pick line. So question number one, what is a port? So a port is basically a type of central line you can use to draw blood or infuse medications or other things into. It basically gives you direct access to a central line. It's basically attached to a major vein. I don't know if you guys can see it very well on camera, but I have a tube going through this area, goes underneath my collarbone into a major vein that goes directly into my heart. So a central line is basically goes directly into a vein that's very close to the heart. Um, so yeah, that's basically what a port is. How long does a port last? A port can last uh, four to six years, but some people have them longer. Basically, they last as long until they fail. <laughs> some people's fail within one or two years. Other people can have them for very long. So it just depends on the person, on the device, things like that. If you guys are curious, my specific type of port is a barred power port. There's multiple different brands of ports, but that's the one I have. How is a port accessed? So basically, I'll leave a picture on the screen of what the port looks like underneath the body. So the port actually is not on the outside of the body like a pick line. A pick line goes through a vein and comes out of the body and sits out here. You guys can check out my pick line videos if you want to see. And basically, you always have access to a central line. You can't take it out or whatever. Well, you technically can take it out, but you know what I mean. It's always there. With a port, as soon as you take the needle out of the device that's implanted under the skin, you no longer have access to a central line. That gives you a lot more freedom if you want to go swimming, if you want to shower, things like that more easily. It's also a good choice for people who don't need to be accessed 24 seven and have the freedom to be able to take the needle out, you know, go about their daily lives and then put the needle back in when they need it. I personally am accessed almost every single day, so, but I do still have the freedom to take the needle out if I was watching to go swimming or something like that. I'm not a huge fan of swimming, so it's not really an issue for me, but you know, on those rare occasions, you wanna go to the beach, whatever. So it is nice for that. All other central lines have, um, are not able to be submerged or anything like that. So that's a really good um, thing about the port. So basically the port is accessed by placing a special needle into the device that's implanted under the skin. So basically the needle just goes through a thin layer of skin and then directly into the port. The port has a big rubber, stopper in it, kind of like if you've ever seen doctors draw medications from a little bottle, they stick it through a rubber seal and then pull the liquid out of it. That's kind of what a port is, only the rubber on it is like really heavy duty, um, a lot heavier duty than like medication bottles, but that is basically under the skin and you put the needle in there and it sticks inside the rubber thing. <laughs> I don't know if I'm explaining it very well. Um, but yeah, once you have the needle in, you are now accessed, you cannot get this area wet, you cannot submerge it, things like that, that all leads to a very high sepsis risk. Another question is, what day-to-day -day care is required for a port? So if I was to not be accessed, meaning I don't have a needle in my chest, all you can see is the device underneath my skin, I'll insert a picture of what it looks like without a needle. Uh, so you guys can see what it looks like when I'm not accessed. If you were to be not accessed, you basically don't have any care required. You don't have to do anything except um, different ports require different guidelines on how often you have to flush it. So if someone is going an extended period of time without using their port, most likely they will have to access it once a month to flush it with saline and heparin. However, each port device has a different protocol, so it definitely depends on your specific device. But if you are accessed, every single day while you are accessed, you must flush the line. So the reason you flush the line is to prevent blood clots. Uh, blood clots are one of the major risks with central line as well as sepsis. So you wanna make sure you're flushing your line daily if that is the protocol your doctor has you on, which most are. So basically you take the end of the tubing, which I'm currently connected to IV fluids. So I have IV fluid tubing here. 
um, but otherwise you would connect to the end of the line and you'd flush um, heparin through it. Uh, heparin is the protocol my doctor has me on. Other than that, that's the only daily requirement is flushing line once a day. Other than that, um, I mean every other day, well, three times a week I am running fluids, um, so that is kind of a daily thing. I run them over 12 hours. Uh, if you want a video on why I do that, I can do that as well, but I run one liter over 12 hours. So, yeah. Um, I don't really know what else to say. <laughs> is a port the same as other central lines? So no, I kind of touched on this earlier. Basically a port is uh, gives you a lot of freedom because when your needle is no longer in your chest, you are completely deaccessed and you no longer have access to a central line. With other central lines, such as Pick Lines, Hickman's, Groviacs, things like that, um, those normally have like some sort of tubing coming out of the hole. Um, a Pick Line is in your arm, but then there is also a type of Pick Line I think that can go in your chest. And then there's Groviacs and Hickman's that go in your chest. With those, there is actually just a tubing coming out of the hole and it's kind of like wrapped around. I don't know, it totally depends on what device you have. Uh, with those, uh, you always have access to a central line 24-7. That means you can never get it wet, you can never um, be de-accessed without it surgically removed, um, except for a pick line, you just pull it. Um, but the implanted devices on your chest um, have to be surgically removed. So yeah, a pick line is very unique in the sense it gives you a lot more freedom, um, but it's not the right choice for someone who needs access 24-7. Is there less risk associated with a port versus a pick line? So yes and no. Um, there's always a risk with a central line. Sepsis is always a risk. Blood clots are always a risk. Um, because of that, um, they, they still have the same risks. However, the port could technically have less of a risk than a pick line. The reason is you aren't accessed all the time. The longer you are accessed with a central line, so with a pick line, you're always accessed technically. You always have access to a central line that goes directly to your heart. Because of that, you're accessed for a lot longer period of time, meaning the infection rate does increase. Also, pick lines, because there is a tube going into your arm, going all the way over here and into your heart, that tube is a lot longer, meaning there's a lot more chance of blood clots. So the blood clot risk can be less in ports than with pick lines. However, that's not always the case. I never had a blood clot with my pick line. I've had two blood clots that I know of in my port so far. Um, none of them were deadly or anything, but they caused some ER visits, things like that. So technically, pick lines could be more prone to clots, but I never had clots in my pick line and I've had them in my port. So, you know, <laughs> totally depends. Um, the other thing with a port, um, if you are not using it as often as I am, if you were deaccessed all the time, that cuts down your risk a lot. Um, however, I'm accessed almost every day, so um, it's kind of the same, you know, risk for me, kind of. Yeah, that's as best as I can explain it. Obviously, the risk is always there. So why do I need a port? Uh, kind of already covered this. I need a port for a condition known as POTS, postural orthostatic tachycardia syndrome. It causes me to have a lack of blood volume. I also have a condition known as hypermobility EDS, which causes the blood vessels in my leg to not be able to restrict strongly enough when I am upright, meaning it's not pushing the blood back from my feet up to my heart when I am upright, um, like most people. So that means all the blood is kind of draining into my legs and into my feet, leaving lack of oxygen to my brain and other vital organs that can cause presyncope, very high heart rate, um, other very distressing symptoms. So adding IV fluids increases your blood volume, so there's more blood circulating your body, and it also hydrates you because people with POTS are chronically kind of dehydrated, um, They and they have issues retaining fluid and salt. Um, I personally cannot retain fluid or salt orally. Um, I just kind of like pee it out. It just doesn't stay retained, but when I have it through an IV, I'm able to retain it and use it properly, if that makes sense. How long will I have a port? Uh, short answer is we don't know. Um, most likely as things are going, it's going to be a very long-term treatment, several, several years. Uh, the only reason I would have the port removed is if it got sepsis and it needed to be removed surgically. Um, the port 
failed for some reason, it flipped or whatever. Another reason would be that I did get better. Um, I don't necessarily foresee my pots going away. That's not really something that happens with this condition when it's this severe. Um, but there is a possibility that a new treatment may come out or I might be able to try a new treatment that is able to reduce my symptoms enough that I no longer need a central line. Does it hurt? So this is a question I get quite often. Um, yes and no. Getting it placed was the most traumatic thing of my life. Um, I could do a story time video on it if you want. Basically, when they place a port, for the most part, they don't put you under general anesthesia unless you specifically request it. A lot of the times they do um, like light sedation, uh, which is a medication called Versed, which is supposed to make you very drowsy and almost have an amnesia effect. Um, basically, you might kind of be awake during the procedure, but by the time it's over, you completely forgot it, things like that. Apparently, my body does not like Versed. Um, apparently I metabolize it very quickly, which is a thing known in people with Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome. Um, I just had never used Versed, I guess, and, um, it didn't put me to sleep, it didn't make me drowsy, it didn't help anxiety, it didn't do anything. I was wide awake, basically felt like I do now. I do, did not have any effects from the drug. Sorry I'm itching my face, I am allergic to this makeup I just put on, so. <laughs> Sorry about that. Yeah, so basically I was awake for the entire thing. They did use local lidocaine, um, helped a little bit. I could still feel almost everything. Um, and I was sobbing the entire time. So getting it placed, yes, hurt a lot. Uh, for the first two to three days afterwards, I wasn't given any pain medication. Some people are fine without pain meds and can deal with just Tylenol, things like that. I was taking extra strength Tylenol as often as I was allowed to, and I was in so much pain I couldn't move the first two to three days. <laughs> it was pretty bad. But after that, after about a week after the procedure, I didn't really have any pain at all. And a lot of people are wondering if accessing and deaccessing is painful. No. Not for me. Um, if you've ever had an IV, those are probably like a hundred times more painful than accessing a port, in my opinion. However, I will state um, my port, because I am very thin, my port is literally just under my skin. That's it. There's no fat, there's no muscle, there's no nothing on top of that. Um, so I'm not sure if you had more layers than just a thin layer of skin over your port, if accessing with a needle would hurt more. Um, I haven't heard anyone really with a port say it's extremely painful. I would say IVs are always more painful than accessing a port. I also have a prescription for Elma cream, which basically you can put the cream on the port 10 minutes to an hour before you access and then you wipe it off and it basically numbs the skin so when you put the needle in you can't feel it at all. Um, I sometimes use it, I sometimes don't. It literally barely feels like anything that I don't really use it. But it is more comfortable to use the Elma cream, so I do try to use it when I remember. Um, long story short, after the procedure is over with, after the pain is over with, it's not painful. <laughs> Does a nurse care for my port? Uh, so yes and no. In the beginning, I was required to have a nurse to teach me everything about my port. I was very open and honest from the beginning that I wanted to do all of my own port care. If taught properly and if you do it properly, doing your own port care at home definitely decreases the infection risk because you are able to do everything exactly right. You do everything the same. Uh, whereas if you're seeing multiple different nurses or nurses who are not trained properly, the infection rate goes up quite a bit. So I was very open from the beginning. I wanted to do all my own, own port care just for safety reasons and because I wanted the ability to be more, have more freedom, be able to go places and not worry if I need a nurse. Um, so I had a nurse for the first four weeks uh, she taught me how to access and deaccess, and then I was fine. But then I ended up in the ER twice for blood clots. Um, I had to have a port study, things like that, because we thought something was wrong with the port. Turns out it's fine. I don't know why I had blood clots. Basically, I was having blood clots after I took the needle out, and I was being deaccessed for like two days. And then when I put the needle back in, I'd have a blood clot. So we're just not keeping me deaccessed. We're just trying to keep me accessed. Um, as often as possible and we haven't had any more issues. 
So because of all the blood clot issues, my doctor did have a nurse come back on my case. Technically, I have a nurse who comes once a week. She takes my vitals and she leaves. <laughs> That's all she does. I still access and deaccess and everything myself. I most likely will be being discharged from nursing in the next one to two weeks if I don't have any more blood clots. Um, basically, the only reason I would need her is if I have another blood clot. She would have to push a medication called Alteplase. Um, but if it's not really gonna happen, then we're probably just gonna discharge me because she literally isn't doing anything and it's kind of a waste of her time and a waste of my time. So um, yeah, so I had a nurse the first four weeks and then she went away and then she kind of came back. <laughs> so yeah, how much fluid do I run? So this might be changing in next week <laughs> because I had blood tests uh, done last Friday, just a couple days ago to see if I can increase my fluid amount. Currently I'm running one liter of NS, which is normal saline, three times a week. So one liter, three times a week. Uh, so basically it's every other day except for like, you know, the week is an odd number, so it's not every other day. Um, and that's why we're trying to increase my fluids to every other day. Because right now I'm doing every other day and then I have to like miss a couple days. And then by the time I'm doing fluids again, I feel like really crappy because I haven't had fluids for a while. So if my blood work comes back clear, we're gonna do fluids every other day. So that's basically it about my port. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and learned something new about ports. Let me know what kind of port videos you guys want to see. I already have a video in mind about organizing all of my port supplies because it's a mess and I need more storage. So that's one thing. Another thing I am doing or hoping to do is do a uh, what's in my port bag. I don't really know what to call it. Port bag, infusion bag, probably infusion bag. Uh, this is the bag from Mighty Well. Highly recommend. I'll leave my code on the screen and down below. Um, it's basically just a 10% off coupon if you guys want to buy anything from Mighty Well. Um, but I really like their products. Uh, they have this infusion bag made for infusing saline. So I'll just give you a quick look, but I just have my bag of saline and my pump. So something different with my port versus my pick line is I am using a uh, IV pump to insert the fluids. Uh, it gives me a lot more freedom to adjust how long the fluids are being run over. And it's a lot more portable because I don't have to drag an IV pole around with me. Um, I really wanted a pump and a backpack uh, because especially I want to start being more mobile. <laughs> um, I'd like to be able to travel eventually and you know, go out and do things with my life and I don't want to be stuck in my room with an IV pole. So I'm hoping in the next year or so I can start traveling again and I can literally do fluids on the go. So yeah, that's my hope. <laughs> and then if you guys are noticing these little clippy things, uh, these are called tubey clips. They are made to hold tubing in place. You can find them on Etsy. Um, I think Airy also sells them. Um, but I personally like to get, get them off Etsy because there's a lot of cool patterns. Um, I like the ones with two clips, but I'll do a whole separate video on my favorite port supplies because I think um, there's a lot of things that I wish I would have bought before I got my port um, that I didn't know I would need or want. Um, so yeah, a port is actually very expensive because a lot of these things are not covered by insurance. The bag is not covered by insurance. The tubey clips are not covered by insurance, all of these things. So that's basically it for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed and leave a comment down below on what you wanna see about my port and I'll see you guys very soon. Bye.